Compliance, elephants, and didits. What do they all have in common? Compliance is the big elephant, and we know, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Let's see how we can whittle away some of the cost of non-compliance, non-adherence. Did I? Or did it? Knowledge is power. There are three main reasons people don't take their meds as directed. Did I take them? Actually, this is where we want everyone to be. It means we've gotten past two of the other major obstacles. Counting backwards three, affordability. People who cannot afford drugs don't take them, or certainly not as directed. Two, people who are not convinced it's the right drug to take are non-adherent. And the one I want to deal with, number one, forgetful. Again, this list is oversimplified, it's not exhaustive, but you get it and or know the point. Everyone who takes meds is either 100% compliant or not. And if they're not, we go back to why. And we go back to people falling into or overlapping these three categories. This group is actively, knowingly engaged in not taking their medication. What they do take, some are unintentionally inconsistent. Affordability is affected by many things. It's complicated, very complicated. Again, this group is actively engaged in not taking their medication. Convinced? This is all about education and lots more. When people don't know better or think they know better, correctly or incorrectly, when knowledge across the board is not shared, it creates problems. Again, it's complicated. Some medications need to be taken with other medications and alone are dangerous. How do we spot these situations and how do we help? I'll share more on this later. The former Surgeon General wisely said, drugs don't work in people who don't take them. And I'd like to add, as directed. Now here is a huge group. And most importantly, they want to be compliant. The simple details of everyday life have a strong effect here. Who hasn't walked in a room and thought, why did I just come in here? Who hasn't had a moment where they thought, did I already take this? This affects our own health and those we help. It may pertain to two parents caring for a child, throw in babysitters and daycare providers, oh, and a school nurse. How about the effects of stress on memory and the amount of stress in our lives, not to mention the stress of the lives of our military and their families? What about siblings trying to coordinate efforts with an elderly parent? Sometimes our routine is so routine that we have that deja vu moment. Usually that's when the, uh, did I already take this, happens. Then the opposite, lack of routine, traveling for work, can really upset the cart. I haven't even touched on other problems, like which ones go with food or on an empty stomach? Which one is two times a day and which one is four? Complicated regimens just complicate things. Of the people who are non-adherent, 58% think that they are. Interesting. How do we help the ones that know they aren't and help the ones that aren't realize it and help them out? There's more. Let's review some facts and think about possible solutions. This specific part of noncompliance has to do with taking their medications as instructed. Let's focus on this, but first, a few more facts. This number is higher than the number of people who die in traffic accidents in the U.S. every year. And what can be done to prevent this? I think we could agree that part of the solution is to have the right tools to keep track of medication adherence. This includes everyone finding the solution that fits them. In a report partially titled Saving Lives and Saving Money by Improving Medication Adherence, it states, three times as many doctor visits and $2,000 per year per non-adherent patient in additional costs compared to patients who follow treatment plans. That quickly adds up to $155 billion. So here's a recap of the facts so far. Adherence from chronic diseases, 50%. Up to one half of patients do not take as instructed and 125,000 die annually and non-adherence cost $155 billion. Non-compliance is the cause for up to 69% of medication-related hospital admissions and adds up to $100 billion. Maybe we can target certain groups as part of a plan. Can we simplify the process 
Would they take once a day, twice a day, with food, without food? Did they take it? I say yes. That's 20% of children and 90% of adults. So, let's not overlook the need for children to receive their meds as directed because we already know the problem of compliance with our older Americans. With more than 77 million people that are non-adherent at a cost of over $155 billion, I'd like to suggest another way to take a bite out of this elephant. Please note again, 58% of non-adherents think they are compliant. Affordability and convinced, these ultimately need to be converted to be forgetful or better, people who really want to be compliant. Of those who are not adherent, again, 58% think that they are, they have good intentions, but the behavior isn't following. Those 58% need a tool, even though they don't know they do. Of the affordability and convinced group, there are education, and financial issues that will get these people closer to compliance. And once they are ready and able, we want to make sure that they are compliant, that they're not part of that 58%, but that they are truly compliant. How do we grab people who think they are compliant? 42% know they have trouble. They are ready, willing, and looking for a solution. That's our person who wants to be compliant. These are our early adopters, and they will jump quickly on board. What a great opportunity to make an immediate impact on noncompliance with an inexpensive tool in the hands of people who want to take their meds. Think of the cost saving and the life saving. This group of affordability and convinced need to be converted to ready, willing, and able. People who want to be compliant. And this leads to the pot of gold, good health and significantly reduced costs. Let's guide them through with cost-effective tools. What is that pot of gold? It's savings, cost avoidance, lower reimbursement, fewer claims, fewer hospitalizations and emergency room visits, and fewer prescriptions. How to get there. The current tools are not enough, and we need something simple and inexpensive. The did it. Huge savings in small packages. The Did It has the days of the week on it so you can keep track of when you took your medication. Here it is, as simple as one, two, three. Stick it on, click it over, and know you did it. Just flip over the day to take your med. On the third photo, you can see how it was taken on Monday and Tuesday. No questions asked, no doubt, no wondering. Stick it on, flip it over, you're done. And you know you did it. For once a day and every other day type scenarios, the did it with the days of the week is used. But wait, there's more. There is also a solution for multiple times in a day, the did it counter. Taking eye drops four times a day is no longer a challenge to track. And the did it can be right on the bottle. It can also be attached to a refrigerator, a keychain, even a medicine cabinet. Anywhere it's convenient for the person who needs to keep track. It comes standard with reattachable adhesive, but permanent adhesive is also available. It gets better. Customize your did it for whatever works for you. Can you tell which one you take three times a day? I bet you can. How many you take a day is easy to customize with the help of one black marker. Yes, it can be just that simple. I can color code so I know when to take my meds. I take thyroid and it's the thing I take first thing in the morning. So I use a yellow did it. By the way, did I mention I keep my medication in the original container? It can also indicate how to take. Orange, for me, means a full stomach. Each person can design their own system. Well, red, for me, is going to be heart medication. This is great for multiple caregivers, siblings with older parents, assisted living situations, spouses, multiple parents, daycare, babysitters. Tracking takes place right on the container. This is also helpful with EMTs and paramedics. Oh, and the two is for twice daily. With so many antidepressants, ADHD medications, antibiotics, inhalers, and so many other drugs that teens take, this helps give them some autonomy. We all know it's important to keep it in the original container, if possible. Liquids and inhalers have a solution. Think eye drops four times daily. Now it's easy to keep track. 
Try putting those in pill trays. Think of women in their 20s, 30s using birth control. Even with their full memory intact, what would they do without a dial pack? Using a Didit, we are creating the convenience of a dial pack on every single bottle. Let me stop and let that sink in for a minute. A dial pack on every medication. All ages need help, and the older you get, the more help you need. So why do we do less for people that are older? The fact is that all ages need help. The Didit gives the instant convenience of the dial pack at a fraction of the cost. So we can keep track for ourselves. We can help keep track of other people, teens. And by the way, this is really great for your pet's medication as well. So now we have an opportunity to keep track of liquids, suspensions, inhalers, eye drops. And these are things that you can't put in a pill tray. So even if you use a pill tray, you can use it in conjunction with your didits. So you can put this actually in the refrigerator on liquid suspensions, and you don't have to worry about batteries wearing out. And now you have the added benefit that you can color code and customize for every single medication. Reusable and it's reattachable, which means that you can pull it off of your old medication and put it on a new one each month. And it's made of polypropylene, which means it's recyclable and green. This is what the packaging looks like for the medicine counter and the medicine reminder. What can you do to create did it awareness? How can you be a did it zone? Use a did it so you know you did. Let's take the worry out of taking medication. Here are a few testimonials. Take a minute to read them. Well, so how do we eat an elephant? One bite at a time. One did it at a time. But for anyone who would like to take their medications as directed and would appreciate using a did it to at least see how compliant they are, should we let them know it's available? Should it be offered? What percentage of over 77 million people can it help on a daily basis? What is a shirt without a button? How about a vial that gives feedback and information? Think of a car 25 years ago or a cell phone. Oops, we didn't have them 25 years ago, or at least most people didn't have them. We have phones now that are portable, send text messages and emails, have GPS, can download apps at will, record and transmit video too. Yet something that can give us our health, help give us quality of life, the presentation of our medications still needs to go to the next step. There are no electronics involved, no alarms, just the simple information. I didn't or I did it. One of the most significant findings in all clinical trials is that people don't want to be reminded to take their medications. What they say is, I just want to know if I did it. So use a did it so you know you did. Please feel free to contact me and thank you for your time. As someone who has to take a daily med, I know the importance of compliance and I also know what it is to be occasionally forgetful. I hear stories every day of how did it's have helped change people's lives. Let's get the didits in more people's hands and realize the tremendous cost savings that will follow. I love that we can save lives and save money by improving medication adherence. Let's do what we can right away.